Welcome to Still a Part of Us. My name is Lee, and today I'm interviewing Jonah, and he has told us a story about his daughter Lydia, who was stillborn at 30 weeks due to a umbilical cord accident. And if you would like to listen to his birth story, please go and, and check that out. And this is the advice episode. Jonah, welcome. Thank you again for telling us a little bit about Lydia. You're very welcome, Lee. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Now, it's almost six and a half years out. Lay some wisdom on us. What sage advice do you have for us? You know, and, yeah. and I, I use that facetiously, you know, because yeah. no, nobody ever really thinks that they have the sage advice. But I'm only two, two and a half years in this journey, and, and you're yeah. six and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, advice. So... Like we were, I guess, kind of discussing uh, earlier, taking taking time to to actually think about you know your spouse and their situation or how they are navigating uh, the loss of your child. I know it gets gets difficult to to actually think about somebody else when you've gone through like uh, you know a tragic experience. It's the, the, those two just, you know, usually aren't together. You, I mean, you're usually, you know, thinking about yourself, but being aware that you definitely need to consider your spouse and how they are uh, experiencing the loss. And then um, making sure that you guys are communicating about that. Um, We had to do that. I mean, it was, it was an effort. It was almost like we had to write reminders to, hey, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? What kind of thoughts are you having kind of thing? I mean, and that helped us tremendously. You, um, you did mention that you you and your wife, Danielle, are, are, are quite introverted yourselves. Yeah. And right. what things helped you to sort of break out of that self I, I want to say self sorrow and help her in her own sorrow as well. You said yeah. writing notes. Yeah, no, a uh, great question. Uh, first, it was lots and lots of prayer, um, praying together, having our family and friends pray for us. Um, and then just knowing kind of my natural tendencies, which are to push people away, close off, um, and just kind of, you know, living inside my head with my own thoughts, you know, knowing that that is not the right way to, to deal with the situation or handle the situation. And especially, you know, now that, you know, at the time we were only, had only been married about two years, things were different, knowing that things were different. I had to act differently and, mm. you know, Daniel had to act differently as well. So it's being able to step back and look at things objectively. How am I handling this? Is this the best way? What can I do different for things to be better? What do I need to do for things to be better? And when I say be better, that doesn't mean to forget and, yeah. you know, move on kind of thing. It's how can I still remember my daughter through the situation, but not be crippled with sorrow that I can't go to work. I can't get out of bed kind of thing. So just having the, I guess the ability to look at things objectively so that if I see that maybe my wife is having uh, a more difficult time or was having a more difficult time, making sure that I'm making myself available. If she just needs me to be there, if she needs whatever aspect of me, whether it be just physical presence, whether it's, you know, physical touch, whether it's um, words of affirmation, kind of using the love languages, things to make sure that she knows that you're in it together. Yeah. Yeah. And invested and going to do whatever, whatever I can do. Um, so that's kind of like the, you know, the spouse aspect and what worked for us. I really appreciate what you said. The situation is different. How do I need to change? Like, how do I need to be different to in this situation? A yeah. lot of people don't understand that. Like, 
it, the situation is happening to 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 me to you but is also happening to you know your spouse like you are you are experiencing it together but separately you know and knowing that you need to be different in this in this situation in this relationship i thought that really spoke to me that what you said so thank yeah. you yeah of course i think a kind of another aspect as far as and we touched on this earlier also was is being able to filter what people say to you you had a great point that you know there is very seldomly going to be somebody who uh, purposefully is going to be malicious towards you with words that they say the the reality is that they just don't know they haven't experienced it they're just trying to say what what they have heard before to try to provide some kind of comfort to you know cover a an awkward situation because it's not easy no, you know no, talking about your 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 son that passed away or your daughter that passed away it's that's never an easy subject to talk about and and you know people just are caught off guard or because they haven't been in the situation before you know they just say whatever kind of comes to comes to mind i think at first kind of in my grief process you know i said that anger was kind of one of the main things in my grief process that there would be times when people would say say things that would rub me the wrong way and i would kind of hold on to that and which obviously wasn't good but at some point, you know, I was able to to realize that the the thing of my grief was anger, and that I needed to let things go. If you know somebody happened to say something that didn't make any sense and just you know didn't help the situation or whatever, just you know, just in one ear and out the other. So having that ability, I think, is really important because people are definitely going to say things that may come across as hurtful but most likely those were not the intentions yeah the the intention is not to hurt you but the delivery is just poor (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's not you never want to practice you never want to practice these these situations but when you're faced with it sometimes it's just like Mm -hmm. oh what do i say what do i say so yeah 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 very difficult and even you know being a father who is who has experienced it and then talking with somebody else who has experienced a loss. It's still, when you hear it and you've experienced it, it's many times hard to come up with words that you know aren't going to be hurtful that are going to be supportive or helpful, trying not to evoke, you know, negative emotions and all that kind of stuff. So it's, you've got really a small, uh, window or space of words that that would be appropriate and supportive and helpful. Yeah. So it's it's not easy. So kind of flipping the tables around from being the one who's receiving those comments to the one who has to give to you know somebody who has experienced it. I fully agree. So it yeah. is it is a a quagmire of 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 words. <laughs> quagmire. Quagmire. Is there anything that you? that you you bought like a personal totem or a personal something that you did personally for yourself to help you to heal or to feel close to your daughter Lydia or is there something that you did yourself for yourself I, I, I did a couple things uh, I think the fir- the thing that I started first is on the actual funeral website funeral home website they had um, like a memorial where you could write notes and and I would write like every single night uh, did that for a while I don't remember how long it was and then my grief process thing with the anger that just kind of uh, <laughs> I had a lot of a- anger issues that kind of um, got got to my head and I stopped doing that and then a friend, a good family friend of ours, got got me a necklace that it has like a dog tag and a cross on it, and has her name on it. <clears throat> so I have that. I keep that with me pretty much all the time. I mean, I, I don't. I will never forget, you know, my oh, daughter. Yeah. yeah. But we have, you know, pictures of her up in our home, and I have the necklace that I wear, and we have. I'm sure you've probably heard of the the bears. Molly Bear, I believe yeah, is what it's Molly called. Bear. 
where it's yeah. where it's weighted, right? Yeah. 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 Did you yeah, guys so get yourself? Did you get did you get a, a Molly Bear? So my cousin who actually had experienced a, a stillbirth, oh. uh, she was actually full term. This was probably in 2012. So that was only like two years before us. They or she had gotten us a bear. Um, because apparently there was such a long wait list to get an actual Molly bear. She, she got a bear and made one herself and sent it to us. So it was phenomenal, phenomenal gift. Yeah. It was exactly what we needed because the, the absence of your child, once you leave the hospital and you don't take your child home with you, the absence of being able to hold them is, it's difficult. It is. It's very difficult. Yes. Um, surprisingly. So we had a bear. We had a bear from our a cousin that um, weighed the same uh, as our daughter. And it was it was nice to be able to 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 hold her and feel like, the, you know, that we still were able to feel our daughter by holding our bear the way the, the way the same. And that is such a special gift. Like the the thought of your cousin to actually do that herself for you that is an extra special yeah so yeah well that, yeah that's that's wonderful that's wonderful yeah yeah and, it was and the, the uh going back to the dog tags with uh Lydia's name on them do you wear them or do you have the in like a uh, you said you have it with you at all times uh i have it with me most of the time yeah most of the time. um so yeah, for for work, sometimes they kind of get in the way or yeah. of of what I do and that kind of stuff. So I keep them in my truck. I have them in my truck at all times um, when I'm not wearing them. Well, that's nice. That's like yeah. having that that, especially wearing something that is always pressing and 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 you could always feel it, even though mm-hmm. it might be in the back of your mind. It's always there with you. So mm-hmm. yeah. Anything else that you would like to? Um, in part on us. Yeah, I mean, I think. Don't feel pressured. Yeah. <laughs> no, no pressure. Yeah, it's um, the understanding that people process grief differently and at different speeds, I think is very important. It's just the same as people have different personalities and handle things or situations differently. And truly, like my wife and I probably couldn't be any more opposite in how we handle things, but we were able to kind of use our differences to balance each other out and having an open mind, being able to think about the other person and what their needs are is really important so that as a, as a couple or as a family, you know, you guys can proceed or can move forward with still having, you know, uh, the memory of your child with you. So wonderful. Thank you, Jonah. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and thank you for sharing your, your knowledge. Thank you for sharing your, your love for your daughter. And and thank you for spending some time with us. Um, Thank you, Lee. You guys are are making a huge difference uh, and it will impact lives in many ways and for many years. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.